Now to a rather different kind of donation, brains. Earlier this week, I visited an exhibition that explores one of the last great taboos, donating your brain to medical science. I'm going to have no more use for this stupid brain of mine, am I? What good are you? They're only going to put you in the oven. <laughs> My brain doesn't work now. <laughs> <laughs> the human brain, the least understood and yet the most incredible of all our organs. I look at the brain as the biggest computer in the world, because you, you can either go forward or you can go back. I've been through from horse and cars right through to space travel. When we die, our brain will inevitably die with us, taking all its secrets and uniqueness with it. I don't mind if I die tomorrow. I've had enough now. But what happens if it doesn't? Brain could go on to have a rewarding professional career long after you're gone. It's not a question that preoccupies many of us, perhaps, but a new exhibition here in the labyrinthine, dusty basement of Shoreditch Town Hall is aiming to change all that. Mind Over Matter lifts the veil of anonymity from 12 prospective brain donors documenting their lives, their thoughts about death, and also suggesting some of the journeys that these people's brains will take after they themselves have departed. The very idea of brain donation conjures Victorian images of body snatchers and brains floating in jars. I said, could they have his brain? And I just said, no. I was so appalled at the thought of them. Just imagine them cutting his head open and, you know, probably sawing it open. <laughs> the exhibition is filled with fragments of the donors' lives, voices, photographs, memories. I like that one up there. I'm only 18. We were married um, in April of 1974. My husband doesn't dance. So I don't dance with him. Over more than 25 years, these donors have had every aspect of their histories documented by researchers investigating cognitive decline. Because brain donation is unlike any other kind of organ donation, it's no use to science without also the knowledge of your histories. To think what really makes brain donation so special, you don't just give your brain, in a sense, you give your life. This exhibition has been three years in the making and is the result of a unique collaboration between artist Anya Dabrowska and social scientist Bronwyn Parry. So what would be your measure of... Increasing large numbers of donations to brain programs, although that would be a very useful output. But I think more it's to rehabilitate people's conception the whole notion of the idea of bodily donation, which became terribly maligned. When you first did visit a brain bank, what was, what was your response? We were walking through all these rooms with um, lab, lab assistants, working with their microscopes, with their various machines, but other than that, you know, it looked like an ordinary hospital floor. And eventually, we were taken to this basement with lots of freezers. Again, nothing that unusual, except the temperature was very low, minus 80 degrees. And then the freezer door opened and there were lots of boxes, lots of boxes with, which looked like little takeaway boxes. And, and then suddenly I realized, these are brains. These are human brains. And there is some kind of, uh, I was transfixed just at that power of what you were describing, that brain realizing how unusual and how different, how, you know, royal the brain is amongst all the other organs that we have. Is part of the aim of the, of the collaboration to give, give a kind of human story to, to, to the subject, as it were? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the key things about this project is not to see this as just some cold, artifactualised material, you know, slides or bits of frozen brain that come from who knows where, but that they actually are connected back to an individual who has a life 
a whole host of complex lived experiences to see it as a kind of journey or trajectory. Dementia, from the Latin de, meaning without, and mens, meaning mind. Current figures predict that more than one in five of us will be suffering from dementia by the end of our lives. Terrible disease. They don't know where they are, they don't know who they are. Oh, they don't even know the partner who they've been with. I think that's a terrible thing, to lose your memory. My husband's alive. He's it, it, still around, isn't he, Alan? No, not anymore. No, when did he die? 30 years ago. You hear from him. These 12 brains will go some way to helping scientists understand this complex disease. Dementia is like a strand of pearls in a way. What r remains in the end are these little polished orbs, glowing orbs of perfect memory of a series of discrete events, but they're quite a way away from each other. And all that's left in the middle is a bit of rather brown tatty string, which kind of holds the whole thing together. And I think, you know, Anya has helped me really understand the nature of memory and how we remember things, what gets remembered, what gets retained, what gets lost and why, and that's been incredibly helpful for me. Roland Barthes once said that uh, every photograph is like a little death. It preserves a slice of time, a moment of life that, that will never be repeated, that can never be the same again. And I think, I think that's why photography lies at the heart of this exhibition. It's a way of making you think about human life, memory, what it is that a brain houses. See, I'm stuck in here. There's nothing the matter with me. It's just age. <laughs>